This is Cameron Chai from azom.com and I'm speaking to Dr. Lou Vance from Ansto. He's the chief scientist out there who's been working on Synroc for quite some time. How are you today, Lou? Pretty well, thanks, Cameron. Good to hear. So, Lou, you've been working on Synroc. Can you tell us what Synroc is? Yeah, Synroc's uh, basically a ceramic. It uh, was invented in uh, the, the late 1970s by uh, Professor Ted Ringwood at uh, the ANU in Canberra. Um, he, he basically uh, saw work that was going on in the US, um, largely at Penn State and uh, Sandia Labs, and uh, work over there was going on on uh, silicate uh, type uh, minerals for immobilising uh, nuclear waste. Uh, Ted Ringwood came up with basically a better, a better ceramic, which was based on uh, natural titanate minerals for incorporating uh, radioactive uh, waste from uh, nuclear fuel uh, uh, reprocessing. So Synroc was effectively a product that was developed by ANSTA, the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation. No, it was, no, uh, it was initiated by uh, Ted Ringwood. But um, ANSTO then uh, became involved in the uh, development work to uh, actually make uh, large pieces of it. Okay, and uh, what, what benefits does it have over other nuclear waste demobilisation technologies? It basically immobilises uh, the radioactive waste better by, by uh, several uh, powers of 10 in, uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in how it uh, responds to uh, groundwater. Groundwater tends to uh, leach the uh, radioactive nuclides out of any, uh, any solid, but the Synroc is much more durable than uh, competing products. And Synroc, how, how was actually Synroc created and, and how does it actually immobilise the, the, the waste? Okay, Synroc, basically, as I said, is based on uh, imitations of natural minerals. The idea is that you substitute the, uh, the radioactive waste ions in the crystal lattices of those uh, minerals and those minerals were selected on the basis of uh, being, uh, uh, having survived in nature for many millions of years, uh, which shows that they're, uh, they're, they're very durable in terms of uh, how they retain the, uh, the radioactive ions. And what's, what's the actual process whereby you create the Synroc? Is it using hot isostatic pressing and it things is, like that? It is. It, it basically started off with, uh, you basically take the, take the uh, radioactive waste, which is in uh, liquid form in general, uh, <coughs> you, you mix that with the, uh, the, the chemicals that you require to uh, make up the, uh, the assemblage of synthetic minerals. Uh, you, you mix, stir, dry that, calcine it to, to remove any um, water, uh, nitric acid and, uh, and carbonate. So now you have a calcine. You basically place that material inside a uh, metal can uh, which can be evacuated and then uh, having, um, and you heat it up at the same time, ha having gone through that process, uh, you, you pull the vacuum off, seal up the can and then place the can in this uh, hot isostatic press in which it's uh, heated up to about a uh, temperature of around about 1100 degrees. You apply a, uh, a pressure of argon gas uh, typically 100 megapascals and so uh, the material is being compressed from all sides and this basically formed a, a, a fine grained dense ceramic that, that's very uh, resistant to, uh, to water. And can you tell us about commercial su success that you've had with Synroc to date? Commercial su success has been uh, a little varied uh, over the uh, long period of its gestation. Uh, I guess in 1981 uh, when it was only at the, developed at the laboratory scale, there, there was a large competition in the US to um, uh, basically immobilise uh, many megatons of um, high level nuclear waste at the Savannah River Laboratory. Um, basically it came second out of many candidates to uh, borosilicate glass at, at, that, um, at that exercise. And that was really because uh, borosilicate glass was, had been demonstrated at full scale and was defined as the best available demonstrated technology at that time. In 1995, the, the question then came up about uh, the disposition of surplus uh, plutonium bearing waste in the US and Russia. Um, we went through a, another big selection process and that, in that case, uh, Synroc actually won out over, over borosilicate glass. Unfortunately, um, that the US subsequently didn't take up that option, but uh, because we gained a victory, if you like, above uh, borosilicate glass, 
our, our technology suddenly became of interest to um, many other players, particularly in the, in the UK, where in 2001, uh, where we started getting a whole lot of uh, contract work to um, basically come up with systems to deal with uh, some of their plutonium bearing waste. That work's gone on, I guess, now for eight or nine years uh, and continuing. Also in the last um, three years, we've got involved with um, the Idaho National uh, Laboratory in, in the US, which is a lead laboratory for high level waste disposition these days. And, and at, at the Idaho lab, there's uh, 4,000 odd cubic metres of um, calcined waste, which has uh, presented a problem over the years because it's not very suitable for glass. We, we've demonstrated that with our hot isostatic pressing technology, that uh, we, we can get savings of probably um, up, up to factors of four in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, volume of, of material that would have to go to the, into the repository and it can also pass um, a whole suite of uh, regulatory tests. So how, how commercially accepted is your technology? How widely used is it at the moment? Uh, it's not actually being used and that, that's because um, there's, there's basically no high level waste um, anywhere or just about anywhere in the world that's actually going down a hole. But where, where the resurgence has come is basically because um, uh, nuclear energy itself is, uh, is going through a big uh, renaissance and that, that's because of its um, perceived advantages in uh, low greenhouse emissions. So with the advent of, um, and the general energy shortage, uh, and so um, worldwide there's, um, it's nuclear energy is, is making a big comeback and uh, SINROC will be part of this, this exercise because to develop a sustainable industry you've got to be able to handle the waste and SINROC is showing uh, great promise um, over competing technologies in that respect. And how, how much has the technology changed over the years? Uh, the technology uh, basically has changed a bit. In the, in the early days, in the, in the uh, 70s and 80s, uh, Synroc really only addressed a couple of different sorts of, um, of, of high level waste. What we do now is that, that uh, instead of having a single uh, basic chemistry to, to Synroc, what we've got is a, uh, a single technology platform. And that technology platform is, is hot isostatic pressing, but with that, teak, uh, with that technique we, we can uh, process basically uh, any sort of glass ceramic uh, the, the original Synroc um, prescriptions, but a whole, a whole uh, range of, of um, different chemistries that are appropriate to a whole range of uh, di different chemistries of high level waste that exist around the world. All right, well, it sounds like your technology is, 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 is poised for some great growth in, in right. the near future with, yep. the, with, the, with the, this renaissance of nuclear energy mm -hmm. that you're talking about. So we hope that uh, in the near future we'll hear a lot more about the success of your technology. Okay, thanks Cameron. Thank you very much, Lou.